Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in the Lord. As the Apostle says today, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. For of all the sorrows and grief and trials of this world, and the tragedies, and the difficulties, there is also an enormous beauty and an enormous reward, an enormous joy in this life itself. And today we see people in that ancient time in Jerusalem trying to make a choice and yet being uncertain. They heard the great miracle of the raising of Lazarus, which were given as a sign, as a revelation of something that was to come at the end of the age. And yet, they couldn't be certain what they were going out to see when they carried their palms. Many of them hoped for a military leader, someone who was all-powerful, and someone who would lead a war against the enemies of Israel, of Judea, and perhaps set the country free from foreign invaders. But they do not know what it was they were hoping for. Because those kinds of military leaders then turn and take power and very often crush the very people that they're ruling over. We've seen it so many times in our own time, days. We've seen the ruler of Libya. Certainly he set, helped to set uh, Libya free from foreign colonial powers. But then he stripped away all the rights of people and made life unlivable. For life without freedom has very little meaning to people. And so many of the military leaders and the powers of the kind that the people of Judea expected were the very kind who, having driven out the foreign rulers, would become tyrants and snuff out the freedom of the people themselves because they wanted power, and they wanted to see power. And they wanted to see someone coming in glory and power, not realizing that power is not limited. Once one has power, one wishes to extend it over everyone. They did not recognize the true meaning of what we call lawful authority or spiritual authority, because our Lord Jesus Christ spoke with all spiritual authority and although he had lawful authority over the heavens and the earth, what did he demonstrate to us? What did he show us in his own life? And this is important because if we wanted to imitate the life of our leader, would we want to imitate a life of power, of lording it over other people, of crushing anyone who disagreed with us, of taking away the freedoms of others and forcing them to do exactly what we wanted them to do, even trying to make them think what we wanted them to think. This is what the people of Israel would have gotten if they had got the Messiah that they were dreaming of, the Messiah that they wanted, the Messiah that they had created in their own minds by not paying attention to the Holy Scripture. But our Lord Jesus Christ, having worked so great a miracle and shown so great authority, yet came riding into the city neither on horseback nor upon a chariot, nor even carried by others, but riding on a beast of burden, an animal that usually carried sacks of grain or the poor, who could at least afford to have one mule. Our Lord Jesus Christ entered in meekness and humility, <coughs> and yet never once did he deny his authority, and never once did he exercise power. Love, brothers and sisters, has authority, and to a certain degree it has 
some power over us. But even with love, if we do not control the power that it has, it can destroy both us and the one we think we love. Love can destroy families, can destroy children, can destroy so much <coughs> if we do not have control over it and limit it to its authority rather than to its power. Today, in the Gospel reading, and today in this feast day, the one great thing that is revealed to us is that the God who created the heavens and the earth is known most surely and most clearly when we know him in his meekness and his humility, is seen most clearly when we understand that he has authority over life and death, and yet that he manifests himself in meekness and humility and lowliness of heart. Because first and foremost, Christ came to heal the hearts and the innermost person, to heal our minds, to heal our hearts, to heal our conscience, to make us complete and whole as human beings, so that we might depart this life understanding the wholeness of our person and understanding the resurrection into the glorious paradise of his presence. He gives us Lazarus as an example and shows forth such great authority and then turns around and enters into Jerusalem in lowliness, in meekness, in humility. And people hail him because of the miracle mostly, not because they understood who he is. They still expect him to raise up an army and slaughter and kill tens of thousands of people in order to liberate Jerusalem and Judea, not realizing that a person who would do that would also be another Herod the Great, would also be another self-serving, powerful dictator who would crush and destroy the people over whom he ruled. You see the difference that we have to choose so often between the way the world thinks and the way our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us spiritually to think and to understand. That we cannot conquer the darkness, the evil, the violence of this world through darkness, through evil, and through violence. But there has to be another way. And the other way begins in our own hearts with the transformation of our own hearts. No matter how many times we read this in Scripture, no matter how many times we hear it, it is yet a great struggle. Sometimes we want to have the most powerful person leading us so he can crush people who oppose the things that we think should be done. Seldom do we stop and think, perhaps the things we think should be done are wrong. They're not the things that should be done. Today we learn of the meekness and humility and the loneliness of heart of the God who created the heavens and the earth, of the, of the Christ who came to deliver us from the bondage, not only the bondage of Satan, but from the bondage of our own minds and the bondage of our own confused and chaotic thoughts and to set us upright so that we might think more clearly and that the darkness might be dispelled from our own hearts. But this is true freedom, the freedom that is within us. The freedom of the heart, the freedom of the conscience, the freedom of the mind. Physical freedom can be obtained, and yet everything inside of us is still in bondage. Or we can obtain to a kind of inner freedom, so that even when we're in physical bondage, we still remain completely free because we have freedom of the mind and freedom of the heart and freedom of the conscience. And this is true freedom indeed. And this is the kind of freedom that Christ came to give to us, to bestow upon us, to deliver the inner person from bondage to fear, to the fear of death, to the power of Satan and his enticements, and all these things that hold us in this kind of bondage. So above all, brothers and sisters, try to learn that kind of meekness and humility and lowliness. And yet we see that Jesus Christ, meek, humble, 
having no place to lay his head, yet exercised his authority, and sometimes exercised his authority with great force. But let us above all try to discover that freedom within, within ourselves. Today we say we welcome our Lord Jesus Christ and many are holding palms or branches of trees. Then let your heart be the gate, the golden gate of Jerusalem today and wave those palms in front of your heart spiritually and see our Lord Jesus Christ entering in meekness and humility and lowliness of heart. But see that when he comes into your heart and he finds the tables of money changers and he finds the corruption that comes into our heart, he will also try to drive it out and overturn those tables within us. And sometimes we rebel against Christ trying to clear, cleanse our heart and cleanse our conscience by overturning the tables of money lenders, by overturning the tables, the cages of the beast that we have caged within ourselves, and all those distractions and defilements that we entertain in our conscience, in our hearts, and our minds. And sometimes we can become angry or resist when Christ tries to turn over our heart and our conscience. And yet if we yield to that and yield to the Jesus Christ whom we've welcomed into our hearts today, we will find freedom. And we will, as Apostle Paul said, find within our hearts and our minds and our conscience a peace that passes all understanding. And a peace in the face of everything that besets us and everything that comes upon us. And this is truly the freedom which the Messiah came to give. This is truly the bondage that he came to break and the liberation that he came to bestow upon all so that we have freedom in the heart and are freer even than the angels in heaven because our heart is free, our conscience and our mind are free. Seek this freedom in our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and you'll have freedom indeed. Freedom that surpasses all the treasures of this earth and above all, the peace that passes all understanding. Amen.